The reason I'm excited for today's ride is because we're actually going to go see some cherry blossoms and we're also going to see the Ishikawa Prefectural Library for the first time. So, so this is the very start of the Saigawa cycling road and look the cherry blossoms are out. This year the first cherry blossoms or sakura started showing up in Tokyo on March 14th which is one of the earliest recorded times for the sakura blooming season. Here in the Kanazawa area the peak was between March 27th and April 2nd 2023. There are two rivers that go around Kanazawa, and this one right here is the Saigawa, which is the bigger of the two, and the other one is the Asanogawa, which we're actually going to ride on the way back. So many blossoms. Kanazawa is home to one of Japan's top three gardens, Kinrokuen, and they actually made the entrance to Kinrokuen Garden free during this blooming time, which was amazing. Hanami means flower viewing, and during this time in spring, you'll see a lot of people picnicking, taking pictures, or just enjoying the fleeting beauty of the sakura blossoms. The peak bloom only lasts for a short time, about a week, so people celebrate the ephemeral nature of the flowers and the spring beauty. It's a really lovely time to be out enjoying nature. I thought that the riverbanks would be super crowded, but I was lucky enough to find a nice spot while riding along the Saigawa to have my lunch and enjoy Hanami. Found a nice little spot to eat some lunch. So I have a really simple lunch today, but it's just rice and cheese and nori and natto. And natto, I think it's a bad name because it, it is kind of stringy and there's nothing really like it in America to compare it to. But if you like tofu and soybeans, it's made out of, it's usually made out of soybeans. I, I like it, so I think if you have never tried it, you should at least give it a try. From there, I continued riding along the river to make my way to the new location of the Ishikawa Prefectural Library. Library. This is a relatively new library too, which is really cool. I love libraries. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really read Japanese yet, so this is my first library that I've actually been to in Japan. And I came partially because of the architecture. I've heard it's really beautiful and just a really large, cool building. In the library, I went into the children's book section first and was surprised to see that they had a whole indoor playground, an outdoor garden area, and several fun reading nooks for kids to explore. Then I went into the main atrium of the library and was totally blown away. This new library opened in July of 2022, less than a year ago. The previous location was near Kinrokuen Garden, dating back to 1912, when it housed documents owned by the Kaga clan during the Edo period. The Kaga domain was actually once called Japan's capital of books and was known for promoting learning. Now, the new way that they've designed this library invites discovery by holding four floors of 300,000 open shelf books, 70,000 of which are placed in a central atrium here with stacked circular tiers like an amphitheater. You'll notice that a lot of these books are displayed with their covers showing instead of their spines, and they're sorted in 12 themes thought up by the library staff. This is supposed to encourage spontaneous reading across a wider range of book topics that visitors can just stumble upon while walking among the shelves. The library had books in other languages besides Japanese, and the most impressive collections were the Harry Potter and the Little Prince books, which they had in dozens of languages each. This kind of got me thinking about how Japanese bookstores and libraries sort their books though, since it wouldn't be in an A to Z alphabetical order the same way that I'm used to in English. I learned actually that in many bookstores, Japanese books are sorted by the publisher, and in libraries, they use the Nippon Decimal classification, which is similar to the Dewey Decimal system in US libraries. The closest thing to alphabetical order is gojuon, or the 50 sounds diagram, which is a way to lay out the kana characters as a table of five columns representing vowels per 10 rows, representing consonants, totaling 50 table cells. 
Wow, that is one of the coolest libraries I've ever been in. <laughs> All right, time to get back on the bike path. This time we're gonna go back on the Asanogawa River instead of the Saigawa. To get to the prefectural library, the closest bus stop is Kudatsuno Sanchom, and you can get there in about 20 or 30 minutes from the Kanazawa train station, depending on how much traffic is on the roads and which specific bus route you take. From here I rode along the Asanogawa River on the other side of Kanazawa, and I took a short detour to go see the castle. As you can imagine on such a pretty day, it was actually really crowded, and so the day after recording this, Zeb and I woke up really early and we went back to go see the castle in the garden before too many people were out. So I'm including some footage from that day because it was so much more peaceful. I also stopped by the Ishiura Shrine, which is right across from the Kenrokuen Garden. And this is the oldest Shinto shrine in Kanazawa, originally built in the 700s and then relocated here in the 1880s. So that footage around town was from the day after, but back to my bike ride day. I left this area around the castle and then continued back to the Asanogawa on the cycling route, passing by one of the tea districts. This is the Kazuemachi Chaya, and in my opinion, it's the most scenic of the three tea districts, right by the river. The trees that are on the riverside are cherry trees, which makes this area even prettier in the spring. At the intro of all my videos, actually, you might notice that the clip I use is from the Kazuemachi Chaya Street. Once you leave the downtown Kanazawa area, the Asanogawa bike path takes you further into the countryside, and eventually into Uchinata, where you can ride all the way to the Sea of Japan. Very nice out here on the Asanogawa. There it is behind me. I had to stop and admire the local train here, which I think is so cute, and it's the Hokuriku line from Kanazawa Station to Uchinata Station. Thanks for coming with me to enjoy the spring blossoms and explore the Ishikawa Prefectural Library.